All right. In this exploration, we're going to talk about the two reactions that take place inside of the chloroplast that help turn energy from light into a chemical energy that plants can store. Now, in these reactions, we're going to talk about two energy molecules that are going to be very important. We've already introduced ATP, which again stands for adenosine triphosphate, with those three phosphate molecules that are going to store a lot of energy. But we're also going to introduce a molecule called NADPH. The NADPH in photosynthesis is very important because it is able to carry electrons. And again, we'll talk more about how that happens later on. But these two energy molecules are very important. You're going to make sure you want to know what these two molecules are and what they do, as well as where they fit into these two reactions. All right. Let's go ahead and go to uh, kind of a summary of these two stages. All right, we call them stages. So the first stage is something called the light dependent reactions. And the second stage is called the light independent reactions. And for the exact reasons you might think. Stage one is the part of photosynthesis that requires light. This is the photo part of the reaction. Light energy is absorbed by these green stacks called thylakoids. Those thylakoids are then able to produce ATP and NADPH that we talked about earlier. These two energy molecules are then used to power up the second stage, which is called the light independent reactions. Another name for the light independent reactions is the Calvin cycle. So we'll talk about both of these reactions in greater detail in just a second, but I wanna make sure that you see this picture because this picture is a great summary of both of these reactions and how they work inside of the chloroplast. One, uh, one way to study, one way to prepare as you move forward would be to see if you could take a blank version of this picture, minus all of these labels, and see if you could fill in all of the details. All right, remember, for photosynthesis to happen, plants need to be able to bring in water and carbon dioxide. They need light energy and they use those reactants, those ingredients to produce sugar. And in the process, they release oxygen. So again, this picture is a great summary of the whole process. And if you can label all of the elements in this picture, then you're in great shape. All right, so let's talk a little bit more specifically about each of these two reactions. First of all, the light dependent reaction. Like I said, this is the photo part of photosynthesis. Photo means light. And the main purpose of the photo portion or the light dependent portion is to capture and transfer energy. We want to capture light energy and we want to transfer it to a form that this chloroplast can use, which is your ATP and your NADPH. All right, so here's another picture. Now this picture might look pretty complicated at first, but what I want you to notice are the numbers. Earlier this week, I told you that if you can think about this process like a story, it becomes easier to understand. There is a sequence of events that takes place, just like in a story. And if you can, if you can tell the story of this process, then I think it makes it easier to see where all of these things fit. All right, so let's start talking about it. First of all, Light energy is absorbed. By the way, if you click on these numbers, they will pull up kind of a summary of what's going on. So it's kind of a good way to study. You can, you can look at the number, you can think through in your head, and then you can click on it to see if you're actually correct. Okay. So what happens here is that light energy is absorbed by the chloroplast, and they're specifically absorbed by these structures right here. Now, these structures, these green structures, are called photosystems. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about why they're called that, or why this is photosystem two and this is photosystem one. I'm not as concerned that you know the names of the specific um, proteins involved in this process, but just so you know what you're looking at, this green is photosystem two, this green is photosystem one. All right, so light energy is absorbed by the photosystem and that light is used to split apart this water molecule. Again, this H2O right here is split apart. The hydrogen portions are broken off, the oxygen portions are broken off, and the electron that connects them is then used to push across this membrane. And what we're really doing is we're really just charging up these different particles because as we charge up these proteins, right, as this electron moves through and passes its energy on, 
it's charging up these proteins so that we can push hydrogens up into this space right here. If you see on the di uh, diagram, this portion on top is the inside of the thylakoid. This portion on the bottom is what we call the stroma. Remember, that's the space outside of the thylakoid. So what we're doing is we're pushing hydrogens up into this thylakoid, and we're creating a concentration barrier, just like we kind of talked about last unit with um, the cell membrane. We have another membrane here, and we're trying to create a, a massive concentration of hydrogens on top of this space. Now, after we break that water molecule apart, again, that electron is going to pass through here. The third step is that more and more hydrogens keep getting passed up into this top portion. We're actually going to absorb more light. We have another um, light, uh, another photosystem here to absorb more light energy and keep this electron moving. And then ultimately what's going to happen is these hydrogens that are in high concentration up in the top part of this lumen, up, up in, in this thylakoid, are going to force their way out through the only opening that they have available. And that opening is a, is a protein called ATP synthase. That's this red protein right here. And this is a super cool protein because as hydrogens force their way out through this opening, they generate um, energy, kind of, like a, kind of like a hydroelectric dam. When water pushes its way through a hydroelectric dam, it turns that turbine that creates electricity. Well, the same thing's happening here. As hydrogens force their way through this protein, they provide the energy necessary for ADP to be converted into ATP. Remember, ADP is the, is the no energy version. We charge it up into ATP. So at the end of this process, what we're left with, we have the electron that was generated by splitting the water molecule. That gets carried and eventually picked up by NADPH. And we have the ATP molecule that's created by these hydrogens forcing their way through ATP synthase. Now there's a couple things that I like to that I like to use to, to describe these to tell if they make a little more sense. First of all, these photosystems are kind of like boosters on a Hot Wheels track. If you've ever used a Hot Wheels track before, you know that there's these wheels that spin really fast and when your car passes through them, they get shot forward to either go through a loop or maybe go around a curve. But this electron gets boosted by these photosystems and kind of pushed. And right around here is where it starts to lose energy, so it gets boosted again, just like a Hot Wheels track would. Um, another, another analogy that I like to use is for NADPH. The NADPH is kind of like the Uber driver of the cell. It is just looking for electrons to pick up. And as soon as it picks up an electron, it's gonna take it to its destination. Just like an Uber driver would pick up a passenger and take them to their destination. All right, so this is the light dependent reaction because it needs light energy to charge up these photosystems and split these water molecules. Now again, I would recommend that for both of these reactions, you take some time to go back and listen to the description of them and practice telling the story of how this light moves through these different places and ultimately ends up as NADPH and ATP. One useful way to do that is to arrange these descriptions. These descriptions right here are what I just went through. So if you can go through and arrange them in the correct order and then tell this story as you go, that's gonna make it a lot easier for you to remember how this process works. All right, let's move on to the second reaction in this process. Once we have our ATP and our NADPH, we go to the light independent reaction. This is the second stage of photosynthesis and it does not require light because we've already used that light to make a different type of energy. And that's the ATP and NADPH that we already formed. Those two sources of energy are going to charge up this uh, second cycle that we call the Calvin cycle. His name, it was, uh, it was discovered by a guy named Melvin Calvin. What a name, Melvin Calvin. So he got to put his name on it. The Calvin cycle is where we're going to take carbon dioxide and we're going to use it to make sugar. Now remember, this type of sugar that we're gonna make has six carbons on it. It's called C6H12O6. Now again, in this process, there's a couple of steps to take place, and there's actually some very complicated enzymes involved, 
And I'm not very concerned that you know most of the chemical processes that take place, but I do want to highlight a couple of the key points so that you could tell the story of the Calvin cycle. All right, so first of all, the first stage of the Calvin cycle is that we have to take CO2 and we have to break the carbon off of the CO2. We then use that carbon that we've broken off and we combine it with a template that already exists. And then through a series of reactions, that template gets turned into various three carbon molecules that ultimately get turned into glucose. This one right here is where we're able to turn that, that three carbon molecule into a six carbon glucose right here. All right. Now part of this process requires that we recycle to get back to the original place so that it is a cycle. And once we are able to turn one carbon into six, we can recycle it and turn it back into that five carbon template that gets us to where we can begin again. Now again, I'm not as concerned that you know the specific details of the Calvin cycle, but I do need you to know that the energy required for this cycle comes from ATP and NADPH from the first reaction, and that we're using carbon dioxide to produce this six carbon molecule. Now one thing I want you to notice, in both the first reaction and the second reaction, oxygen is released as a waste product. We don't need it, okay? We take the hydrogens off of the water, we use those, but we let the oxygens go. We take the carbon off of the CO2. We use the carbon, but we let the oxygen go. Once again, in photosynthesis, oxygen is just a waste product. We don't even need it. And this is really important because in the, in the, in the Earth system, the ability for carbon dioxide to be turned into oxygen is hugely important. And that takes place through this idea of photosynthesis. All right, so these are the two reactions that you need to know. The light dependent reaction, the light independent reaction. And if you can tell the story of these two reactions, you'll be in good shape.